Would you like to learn how to play 1d6 as black? If so, then you've come to the right place. Hey, I'm Grandmaster Max Illingworth, and as you might have guessed from the title, we're going to be playing a lot of 1d6 in these games. Uh, to remember, I've been playing quite a bit recently on chess.com, just for a little bit of variety. And I'll show you a few different ways in which you can play it through the games. Uh, by the way, this is one fun part of this Knight F6 in Bullet. At times they just won't see the pawns under attack and you win a pawn for free. I uh, don't know why he's doing this H pawn advance. Um, jokes aside, this is also a little opportunity to introduce a few other bits and pieces. You might be wondering, for example, well, what we do if we're playing with white. We're going to be very uncreative and we're just going to play 1d3 and play the same positions with an extra tempo for white. And you can get a good feel for how to play the positions that way. As you can see, this guy is just blundering all his pawns, so... Okay, it's a nice chance to also introduce uh, a few other points, like the first video I've done in quite a long time, as this guy is blundering all of his pieces here. Uh, too bad it's not crazy, so we could get this over with faster. Uh, but yeah, if you're enjoying these videos, yeah, do make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Uh, it's not where an E6 is a little bit awkward, but not the biggest problem for the moment. The thing is with d6 is also pretty solid, like you don't have any big weaknesses in your position in general. Uh, this knight can be kicked out pretty easily, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and it's quite creative, there are a lot of different ways in which you can play the positions. See, blunders the knight with a check. And yeah, this point is just cleaning up. The one nice thing about playing bullet, you kind of can get these winning conversions done a lot faster. Uh, but it's the intro for this one, so that's fine. Um, yeah, and I mean... You're not limited to playing it with like g6 and the pier cyber, but there are some other ways so you can also play the positions, which we will get to after I finish checkmating this guy. Um, I don't know who's rating. I've kind of got it hidden, but if I click this, we can we can find out. Or you know, you can also try to guess for yourself and keep the suspense a little bit more. Ah, uh, so dude's trying to attack me, but not the most successfully. Uh, I can just trade off the knight pretty easily to, to stymie any of his attempts here. Uh, so just swap off the knight. We're not overly concerned with this pawn coming to a6, actually. Uh, we're just going to play b6 and block it, more or less. Uh, in fact, we could even do that here if we want to, and just not care about the knight. But in reality, this is probably... Knight e3 got a7, yeah. So maybe I should actually play b6 anyway, and just solve that problem in advance. Who thinks he can queen his pawn, but we got it covered. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, okay, it's not a, a live video. This is just a, a recording style speed run I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you have any questions about how to play 1d6 as black or some move that annoys you, yeah, feel free to ask it in the comments. And well, if it's not me that gets back to you, someone probably will get back to you at least. So... It's taking pawns. So you can kind of see I sort of disengaged a little bit with this game at the moment because it's so one-sided at this point. Um, okay. I was hoping there was a way to checkmate quickly, but we'll just have to checkmate slowly, I guess. Uh, maybe d5 will be the next move. Yeah, let's just pre-move it. I don't care. And we're going to go bishop b4 is the idea then. Just bring the bishop into the attack. At least he's low on time, he's going to flag pretty soon here. And we can, you know, finally get on to a, a game that might be a little bit more interesting. Taking a pawn first is probably better, but... Okay, at this point it doesn't particularly matter. Just defend everything and he has nothing, you know. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's go rook f8, I don't know what this is. See what he's doing here. He has no follow-up. Queen d7, doesn't really do anything. Yeah, so... I mean, main moves are good, but let's just trade off his attackers. It's an easy way to convert it here. And uh, once this game's over, we can move on to the, the next one. Looks like it's about to flag. Okay. Yeah, 757. Seven. The risk we're doing just like, actually, I don't want to play him again. I want to find a new opponent who may be a bit more challenging. Uh, just give like a rematch of on autopilot. But yeah, let's... Okay, we're black again. That's a good start. Um, This one hopefully will be a little bit closer than the last one. I can show a few more ideas with d6 beyond, you know, taking a free pawn. Um, yeah, it works pretty well against d4 as well. It's kind of hard to find a move where this doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to go for g6 and show this 
idea of playing a quick e5. Um, I played a lot of different moves on move 2 even just this year, but there's kind of a nice point I also talk about in a course of mine play g6 like Ikaru. I were able to get in a faster e5. And if you play the king's Indian, because you've got the bishop supporting the pawn. Uh, maybe a queen e7 is just nice, threatening the e4 fork. I can put the knight on f6. You could also put it on h6. You could really make an argument for both choices here. Um, I think I will put it on, unless I go e4. Yeah, I'm wondering if e4 even just wins material here, in fact. Because um, queen b4 does actually fork and win a pawn if I want it. And yeah, maybe I do want it here, in fact. It looks a little risky, but I think that our position is so solid that we can get away with it here. Um, like bishop c4 is a little bit of an odd move, and yeah, once he gives up the bishop, it's going to be very one-way traffic from this stage. It's weird, like, I sort of made it three minutes, I'd have enough time to talk about the moves, but maybe possibly I left too much time for myself in a way. If I made it one minute, though, I'd be talking faster, and, you know, know some people need more time to, you know, to process what's being said, so three minute kind of allows for that, you know. Uh, let's just develop, uh, it doesn't overly matter, but I'm going to put on e7, um, just to keep this pawn on e5 a bit more protected. It also allows the f pawn to move later in the game as well, which is a plan you see quite a lot when you play these d6 and g6 style systems. Because uh, actually I used to play uh, g6 on move 1 quite a lot as black. Like I especially started doing it after creating this play g6 like Ikaru course. But then it turned out my results actually were better with it in Bullet and Blitz and virtually any of my other openings just from like going through so many of Ikaru's games. Uh, b3 is a blunder by the way, this... Knight's going to be on pre now. So, yeah, not ideal for him, of course, but he was he was losing anyway. Um, I mean, even though we're up a piece for nothing, like, you might notice sort of some patterns in how these pieces are typically being developed in these games also. Like, the idea of keeping the option to push the king side pawns forward so you can attack their king is a, a nice little touch here. Okay, now he's just blundering all the pieces. Uh, what can you do? Uh, yeah, at this point, let's just go e4. Let's just shut down the position so that he has no counterplay whatsoever. Um, the only question is how to develop the bishop on uh, c8, but actually there's a, a lot of good ways. I can move the knight, bishop e6 is one of the the easier ones probably. Um, and we're just happy to trade and, you know, bring our rook into the game. Knight e5, we can just develop the pieces basically. Uh, the rook will come to d8 and all of our pieces are going to be on very good squares after that. Um, also, knight can come into d5 and start targets and weaknesses. If you're colorblind like me, you're not going to notice the highlight of the dark squares, but, you know, I try my best. Uh, I probably is a way to change that in the saying so you can make it a more colorblind friendly color, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm the grandmaster, not the uh, not the tech designer, let's say. Um, his knight is now kind of trapped, and we're just going to gonna pick up. Uh, actually, we can take that pawn because he is... Facing his rook being under fire. Now I have to choose which pawn we give up. Let's give up this one just to make his pieces a little bit less active. Now we just defend the bishop. But yeah, I mean, this is going to be relatively easy. But now I also realize that, you know, most of you watching this are going to be like, I don't know, rated 1000 or 1200 or less. So, you know, seeing how to beat these players who are maybe a similar rating to who you actually face in games, you know, maybe it's actually more instructive in some respects than if I was playing like other title players. Uh, but I'll let you be the judge on that one. Uh, we can bring the pawn up, bring up the ship around. Okay, blunders the rook instead. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of kind of easy from here. I'll uh, just, just take all his pawns, trade off his rook, and the rest is very, very simple from there. Uh, unfortunately, he's not resigning, which is kind of annoying. It would make a little bit of a better video if they just resign instead of playing till mate. But okay, it's not entirely in my control and you know, I'm too lazy to get some uh, some editing done to put it in as such. Uh, yeah, let's just give mate next move. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to give a rematch. Okay, at least we're moving up the ratings a little bit. Let's see, will it be a 1-100 next or will it be uh, someone else? We'll find out. But not just yet because I don't see his rating. Makes a bit fun for all of us. Uh, so yeah, we go D3. We're just going to do the same kind of thing as before but where we have a extra tempo. And once again, I'm going to go for the kingside Fiend Keto approach, which, you know, you can do it with both colors. You know, I'm 
not necessarily saying like you should play one D3 your entire life, but if you're kind of lazy and thinking, okay, let's just play like the same system with both colors, like, you know, you can definitely do that. It's not like you're going to be worse ring if you play one D3 and also it shows a problem when you go E4 too quickly or if they go E5 too quickly as white. What happens is then they basically just lose a pawn. Saying which way I want to take, uh, I'm just going to take this way, I think, the more active recapture. We don't really care about the queens being swapped. We are up a pawn after all. 94, you could actually make a good argument for either capture there, but for some weird reason, he's saying let his pawns be doubled, which is a little bit odd. Um, and yeah, we're just going to keep it very solid. Again, you might notice how flexible our pawn structure is when we uh, when we play this d6 uh, variation, or d3 in this case is white. Like, you really have a lot of different options how you push your central pawns or, you know, decide to play more with the pieces, as it were. Uh, as with this guy's rating, I mean, I'm guessing he might be 1,300. I was going to say 1,200, but thinking 1,300 maybe is the guess. And we're up a pawn. We've got the bishop here. His pawns are doubled, so we really have all of the advantages here, and that makes it much easier to convert this into a win than, you know, if it was a bit more balanced, like if you were only up a pawn and everything else was kind of normal in a sense uh anyway uh 96 is a decent move to stop uh to stop the bishop uh coming to f4 because that was my idea uh my plan now is i want to try and fix some of his pawns as weaknesses bishop c5 is decent but e3 does block the attack on f2 and yeah i mean a good plan can also be just to bring the bishop to c3 and just kind of attack that pawn on uh on f6 as such b5 is a little bit odd to me I think bishop c3, I can even let him take and just say I have the stronger counterattack. Uh, bit off topic, but actually my phone is like buzzing with like messages. It's probably from, uh, probably from like my poker group or something, like a study group. But anyway, or it's from Facebook, one of the two. Um, but yeah, the guy's rate 1562. Yeah, we'll give him a rematch. I think it's a decent level of opponent, like to show the ideas and show, you know, how you can beat some of these players as well in your own games. And there's always that risk, you know, you end up being paired with like another 700 and don't know if everyone wants to see that or not. But anyway, moving on to another game. We might get white again for this one, I don't know. So this first time I have a little bit of a wait until getting an opponent. Um, okay, there we go. Got, I feel like I've played this guy before. Name looks kind of familiar. Um, so this is a fun idea of playing d6 versus g6, or knight f6, is you can actually play e5 quite quickly, and yeah, you don't really mind if you lose the right to castle, but after d5 you have a few options. I'm going to go with bishop e7, because I played f5 a lot in some of my other games, so I want to show another idea that you get when you uh, when you haven't played g6 yet, and that is to go bishop g5 and trade off your bad bishop stuck behind these pawns for their good bishop. Because uh, F1's on the light squares, so their light squared bishop is a little bit more stuck in comparison. Um, yeah, he plays E3, like, you know, he probably is more effective to wait for E4, but, you know, we still play F5, we still get a creative position with some uh, some interesting play and not much opening fury. You know, very original position, of course, from this point. Uh, H4 is a decent move, we'll put the bishop here, then I can maybe come in this way to play it a little creatively once again. Uh, also, many times you can bring the knight to the queen side. That can be a nice way to stop them trying to make progress on this side of the board in the middle game. Uh, Bishop a3 is a little bit odd to my mind. Not entirely seeing the logic there. Um, this knight move actually sets a little bit of a trap, which I'm kind of curious if he'll fall into. Uh, where, like, he couldn't take the pawn for some tactical reasons. But yeah, he doesn't fall for it. Uh, let's go knight c5 and... And here I'm thinking about trying to go g5 and open up his king. Because when he castles now, he's got some weaknesses on the side of the board. Uh, in fact, even move like bishop h4 is probably no good, but it's an interesting concept at least. Um, at this point, maybe I can even go like bishop d7. The idea is I wait for bishop b2 and then play knight g4. When he doesn't have f3 to kick the knight, this is what I'm going for here. And yeah, g5 and we just start attacking the king and you know, have some fun at this point. Uh, I hope you guys are having fun anyway. Uh, so, at this point, yeah, we just want to rip open the king side. This is why I didn't rush to castle, because I want to keep the rook here for the attackers. It was kind of what I was thinking. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, White's plan probably should be, you know, bring the Rook to the H, file the defend. Maybe the Knight can come around this way as well. Let's just continue with the plan. Um, he cannot, well, he can't really go for a free B4 so easily anymore, because now this pawn's undefended. Uh, F4 is a little bit of a radical move. You obviously are creating some quite real weaknesses around the king. E3 is also a bit backward, so yeah, very, very risky in some respects. Um, yeah, I took with the bishop because I kind of want to bring the queen in the attack and bring the bishop in the attack. Uh, somehow that just felt right to me. Go H4. I tried to use a blunder because he has knight G6. This is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but yeah. Well, we have the position in fives now. I should have gone queen G5 and then H4. And that would avoid that problem, in fact. Um, okay, fortunately he doesn't see it, so that kind of works well for us. Uh, maybe we still play queen g5 anyway. It's kind of funny how the king is in the center, and yet it's the, the white king that is really unsafe here, where we can take and already get some threats happening. Um, kind of weird position, but yeah, I mean, I kind of like that idea of playing rook a3, actually, and then knight f2, uh... I'll play the move so you can see what the idea is, basically. He can't take with a knight, because then the, the queen is going to be on pre. But if he takes with a king, I have knight f2. And suddenly he has some um, tactical problems here. Actually, I kind of made a bit of a dumb mistake that after king g2, I actually can't take here because of the pin. Fortunately, I still seem to have pretty good compensation anyway, because of his king being so open. So I guess that was kind of lucky in a sense. You know, I can take, and I can still bring the knight in, and... Still, it's, yeah, very, very tough for, for white to survive in this position. I'll just castle, and then the knight is actually under threat, and, you know, the rook can come in the attack. It's just very, very bad for white, essentially. Um, is knight b5 just a mistake? Uh, I feel like I have some tricks there in that case. Yeah, I do have some tricks. Um, if I castle long, he might take on a5, so maybe this is the moment to, to play king d7 instead. Because rook e5, I go bishop a3, and I actually win a very large amount of material in that case. Again, get knight tree, I can take the queen, it's the whole point. And so you see the tactics just kind of work at the end of the day. Knight tree, knight tree is coming with a check. And that should allow me to consolidate the position. This also comes with a check, by the way. Uh, I can play rook f8, or rook g8, they both are winning, I think. Uh, but let's go rook f8. Yeah, he can take, but I go rook f4, and he has nothing after that. Just gets made in more or less. I have queen a1. Nice way to pick up the queen here with a check and basically just end the game. And yeah, he's 2 2 4 1. Played this one very badly, but still managed to win it. Let's see how the next one goes. Playing d3. Um, let's go knight f3. Let's play it slightly different way to before, where we're going to just play normal sort of King's Indian attack style setup. Uh, so. I mean, you guys look as like a peer with colors reversed or King's Indian with colors reversed, I guess. Uh, another way to look at it. Um, for this one, I feel like doing something creative, actually. Um, let's go Knight C3 here. I mean, Knight D2 and E4 is normal, but I want to show a few other ways to play the positions as well. Like just going E4 and just pushing in the center. And getting this kind of, you know, King's Indian type structure once again with colors reversed with the closed center. Uh, very easy plans as well, like a4, knight a3, going for f4, it's all, all pretty standard here. And that's indeed what we're going for, the, in this case, light squared strategy. Uh, a6, trying to go for b5, but we can also prepare it like bishop d2 and then knight a3 is a, a nice little resource. And he also is allowing us to play a5 and just fixing that structure in our favor is, yeah, very, very nice for us here. Knight a3, we're not afraid of knight takes because we are able to take that pawn on e5, but we also have the move knight c4 at the ready to bring the knight to a nice central position. So I kind of like white's position here, it feels quite promising to me. Um, knight c4 is definitely more appealing now that we're not having to worry about this sort of thing. His idea is to try and trade off the knights, but I want to kind of do it on my terms. So I'm thinking I might go knight b6, and then the idea is I can maybe bring the knight to d5 in some positions, or even knight g5 and f4 is looking very appealing, because actually you can't avoid the trade of this very valuable light squared bishop. Uh, without this bishop, his whole position is just very weak, because Ehring is kind of based on the on the uh, dark squares at the moment, with the bishop remaining bishop and the, the pawns in the center. I don't even know if queen e8 does anything, so I think I can just play like f4 and just kind of attack here. 
Um, if he takes, yeah, I probably should take with this pawn, actually, but... Yeah, he's doing some kind of weird stuff, and I think I can just take... And I believe that f5 is going to be a very nice trick for me, actually. Because if he takes twice, which is why I expect him to do, well, I can take on c4, I can play bishop d5, I can play bishop a3, like, one of these moves is is going to be very good, you know. And I think that bishop to d5 might actually just be winning here. Um, because after queen g6, bishop e4, okay, he does have knight e7, but he's still losing material in that case. Uh, among other things, to knight d7, I can win the exchange. I might also just be winning a piece with g4, actually, so... Yeah, it's just completely lost for him after this. Um, and kind of be interesting to see how strong this unopposed bishop is as well in... in this instance. So here, I mean, g is probably the top computer move if you already ask the engine. But I'm also wondering, yeah, if... I can be more practical here. Um, also, I do have just queen... Queen f3 as knight h4 is a little bit tricky, actually. So, yeah, I think g4, it looks risky, but it actually probably just wins a piece simply. Uh, just take, and then rook takes is the, is the point. So, yeah, that's showing how you can sort of outplay your opponent in this kind of structure, at least. It did occur to me he can try to play c3, but yeah, he goes for this instead. We can take, he can only take one of these pieces at the same at a time. And with rook g5, we are keeping the control in, in this position, keeping up the, the attack. And yeah, I mean, we obviously are not at all opposed to trade of queens. He resigns and going to look for a different opponent just for a little bit of variety. So it's not just the same thing every time. Uh, I'll try to show a few different variations that can play out in my games. So yeah, I'll just wait for the, the next opponent. Um... I don't know how long I'll make this video, but I don't expect it to be over an hour at the very least. So, yeah, I'll just accept a few of these friend requests while I wait for the next uh, next opponent to show. It's kind of weird, like, I haven't really been talking that much lately. It's like I almost forgot how to speak, but also I kind of find out you're getting the same opponent again, but okay, we tried at least. Uh, so d6, he goes c4. We're going to go e5 again, but if he plays d5, I'm going to play it a different way. Gonna play with a5. I'm gonna show the the queen side plan in action. Um, really want to go f h5 just for laughs, but I will go f5 here. Uh, now he committed to g3. Like e4 is normally the the main disadvantage of playing f5 is that he can try to like get a knight into this e4 square. But with the way our pieces are placed now, it's not so easy for him to actually get this in, uh, which is good news for us. Just play a little bit creatively with this knight to h3 idea, but. I mean, a normal sub is just bishop e7 castles, put the queen on h5, but I'm kind of wondering if we can do better than that and maybe go h6 and actually go for the pawn storm and kind of kill his knights, kind of kill his bishop on c1 by just not giving him g5. It's kind of an appealing idea to me to make his life more difficult. Um, There's an interesting question what to do if he plays f4, but bishop e3 I think we're happy to see because we kind of want to play f4 at some point anyway. That's going to be the key move to free our bishop and get in the attack. But bishop here, I think, is a mistake. Um, I think, well, we actually just win a piece with g4, uh, which I think he just completely overlooked. Because, uh, well, it's not the most natural-looking move, but, you know, a piece is a piece in a way. Uh, so that's going to be, I think, technically winning. We could even take with the bishop, maybe. Uh, but he has rookie one, not so easy. So, yeah, let's just take the knight and just consolidate and win with an extra piece, essentially. Um, the king's not really in that much danger in this position, because we have a very good hold over the dark squares here. So, that kind of ensures us against too much trouble, in fact. Uh, yeah, probably we'll just... Okay, he's trying to stop us castling here. But we can, you know, also put the king on f7 even as a, a move as well. And try to bring the, the queen in or something like this. Um, of course, you know, you also can just move the bishop and it's probably fine too, in fact. But yeah, just really trying to make it hard for him to open up the position in his favor, essentially. Um, F4 doesn't really do that much because it just messes up his structure even more than it already is. And yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a struggle to figure out what the plan should be for white here. Uh, because he's down a piece. Uh, let's just go... Let's go queen g8. I kind of like this idea I came up with before, so let's just stick with it and just steadily improve the position. Uh, the bishop may also be able to prove a little bit sidelined here. Uh, but you're going to go c6 at some point, but I think there's no real need to hurry. We can 
kind of slowly improve the position here and you know white doesn't really have an easy target once again it's kind of a bit of a theme that's coming up with these d6 positions how hard it is for white often just to do something uh clearly he wants to go f4 at this point but you know we also could anticipate it actually and try to meet f4 of e4 by moving the queen first uh which is kind of appealing actually it does allow his knight to try to come in which is the only thing but Actually, it doesn't even really matter. We can just go rook e8 and just avoid it this way, in fact. Um, so yeah, and now we have a bit of a discovery on the queen. That was that was the idea of rook e8. So at this point, uh, we kind of just cash in the chips. Just take all the all his pawns. Take all his pieces. We're up a piece, so we're very happy to exchange the material, of course. Uh, you know, very happy to trade queens. Also very happy if their king stays under the attack here. Like Rocky Free, we can start giving checks. And yeah, he just resigns. Um, given how hard it was to get a an another opponent earlier, let's let's play him one more time and after this game I might do a little bit of bullet. It's like you kinda know the some of the basic ideas of D free, like just from seeing the same patterns come up over and over. And yeah, we're gonna play a little differently. We're gonna go G free and uh actually I wanna show you guys a, a cool setup actually. This is a little bit of a Illingworth specialty actually. So instead of like doing the normal knife free cast we saw last game, there's this really fun setup where you can go bishop h6, h4, h5, and recently I even started to play it without bishop g2, just using that tempo to get a faster attack on the king, or you know, not playing knight c3 and again just going for the attack. Now, computer will tell you that this is not a good idea at all, that you take knight g4, queen b6, and black is just better. But the thing is, like if you don't aren't cheating with a computer in a game like you haven't seen this before then yeah it's actually quite tough for, for black to deal this attack just very very direct and you know okay he finds knight g4 but this is not the best move order because now we go h5 and we're getting this attack down the h file um and you're not limited by the way the attack down the h file like even putting that pawn on h6 is also very annoying for black putting the pawn pawn up to e5, I'm kind of tempted to go knight c3 and start to put some pressure on his center with the pieces. Uh, so he goes bishop e6. We have a few options here, in fact. I mean, one is to go f3, take queen h6 and try to attack that way. Which is something I've done before in a few cases. Um, it's not the only option. Like, you can definitely also just develop normally, like knight f3, knight g5. But knight f3, f6, I'm not really sure how I follow up in that case. Uh, so... Maybe, I mean, you could also go e4 and try to play in the center. There's really quite a few possibilities one can go for in this position. And, you know, I kind of like the idea of going e4 and switching to central play. Now they kind of committed their knight away from the center. It's a nice way to show a bit of the flexibility in uh, in white setup here, in fact. Uh, so, interesting to see how he deals with it, wherever he takes and lets my knight kind of get active or with knight e4 and this stuff. Or wherever he's going to go d4 and try to keep it closed. Um, he doesn't really have knight f6 because I can also take and bring the queen to h6 and, you know, be an annoying like this. So, yeah, so it's a position where black probably objectively is still okay. But I think the momentum is shifting a little bit to white at this point. Because uh, I have, like, all the flexibility and black is, yeah, a little bit stuck. Uh, I don't really mind if he takes. I mean, this is... I had a feeling he might go for this, but I think it's a little bit impulsive by him, actually. Because I get this very fast attack with the, the knight coming in, and it's not at all easy for him, I think, to deal with this. Um, like, the knight is just such an annoying piece on e6, and... Yeah, I'm not sure if this was the ideal square for the queen either, because he also might be allowing this with a tempo now. So I think that this could be becoming, like, very close to lost for black, in fact. Uh, with this fact that they can't really avoid this, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm just checking to make sure this actually works for, uh, for white. But I believe that it does. Bishop h3. I mean, queen g7 might be the best move, but then I just win the exchange, which I think is maybe what he had overlooked earlier. I can just take and... I mean, he does get the pawn back, most likely, but it's still very, uh, very bad for, uh, very bad for black, of course, to just be down exchange for not much compensation. Um, because here I could even play, like, castles for example and then when he takes go rookie one and I actually just kind of get the pawn back in that case thanks to some tactics uh like he can't go rookie eight because then the knight hangs this is the the key detail to uh to see here so 
yeah, so this game, I mean, it feels like it, it shouldn't be overly complicated to convert it, and you know, then maybe I'll have some fun and play some one-minute games so I see ideas a bit faster. Okay, it's true, Pawn there was probably better, but it, it doesn't make a massive difference by this stage. Like, the ending is still winning for White, of course. Um, Rook d7, maybe I even just keep the tension there, but he resigns. I think it was a reasonable game, kind of shows what, what White is aiming for in these positions. Um, but I want to play some one minute, actually. I want to show you not just with, like, explaining the ideas, but also just the volume of seeing the different patterns of play, because I think that's going to gonna help quite a bit. Okay, I don't know why I'm play paired with an I, a GM here. Oh, was it, like, a fake one? No, it's uh, an actual GM. Okay, that makes things kind of interesting. But it seems like he's not here, so I don't know. He's probably just going to auto-abort, which... Considering I didn't intend to play a rated game, maybe it's uh, an alright thing, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I think he's going to abort because he's not here. I don't know the don't know the story there, but yeah, is what it is. I recognize the name as well. Yeah, this uh, this Indian GM. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with the auto abort. It's kind of weird, but yeah, after this, I will set so it's unrated because I'm pretty sure I accidentally set this one to to rate it. Um. You don't get points, by the way, if they are bought in a rated game. Just is what it is. But I do wonder why it's running down all the way to zero. That's kind of odd to my mind. But, yeah. Okay, it turns out it actually was a, a rated game I unwittingly set. Uh, as you can sort of see here. Um, so maybe that was kind of lucky. But, yeah, let's... I don't know why it's set to rated. That was kind of weird. But, okay, it's set to unrated now. So that works. And, yeah. I'm sure it's funny if someone in contact asked, like, why do you play unrated and not rated? And short answer is I kind of enjoy it more. But anyway, I'm going to show a different way of playing these positions that you can also play in a kind of reversed Philidor style, as we're going to do here. Probably should just go D4. Just take the space, but yeah, whatever. He's playing very, very passively, but this kind of Gellis sub is, like, pretty natural if they do some, uh, do some weird position. I should go E5, probably, but... Didn't want him to think twice about taking the h4 pawn, I guess. Now I'm just going to try and weaken his uh, his king a bit. Dude's playing surprisingly fast, actually. Like, normally they play much slower in this in these unrated bullet games, but that being said, his quality move is not the highest either, admittedly. But yeah, now he's just very, very passive in this position. And we're just going to kind of outmaneuver him, basically, like bishop g5. Okay, now he's going to try and open things up a bit, but I think this should be quite fine, actually. I can get d4 for the knight, and his king is very weak in the long term. I'm going to take, I'm going to go knight d4. The knight can also come to g5, potentially. Um, is he just blundering something? I'm just going to take here. Queen d7. Uh, let's go rook c1 and apply some pressure this way. Bishop a4, I think I can actually take here. Though it may even be better to play for compensation, actually. Um, let's just play for compensation, because bishop's kind of stuck anyway, and... Tried to be tricky and attack my rook, but he ends up running into this pin instead, which does win me a piece and basically therefore wins me the game. Uh, we take, and it's kind of easy from here, actually. Um, would sort of expect him to resign kind of soon, but, like, just based on the way he played earlier, but anyway, he doesn't have anything. One check is, is not going to change much here. And, yeah, this should be forced, mate. Oh, I blooded the rook, but he didn't see it. Okay, I was winning anyway, but... Not the highest quality game, but we'll give him a rematch. Just so you can see how to beat the Turtlers with D6. Because I know some of you are probably uh, facing these Turtlers and want to know how to deal with them. Also a nice point with playing the quick E5 is you can often kick their knight with E4 and just get this really nice space bank in the center. Which can be a bit difficult for the opponents to deal with. Okay, he turns out he just blundered a pawn here, which was nice for us. Uh, knight B3, we're going to take the bishop. The plan is just to castle as soon as possible here, by the way. Uh, we don't mind trading, we're up material. Uh, this can be annoying, but not that big a factor. I meant to play rook c8 there, by the way. A little bit of a mouse slip, but it doesn't massively affect things, I don't think. Um, knight here is kind of annoying. It's true, we sort of avoid that if we had, yeah, not slipped. But anyway, goes bishop g5, which feels like a blunder. But uh, bishop e7. I mean, we are winning a pawn in this case. Let's just take here and hope he blunders this way. He doesn't. Um, but yeah, he has this check, which is kind of a pain. Whoops, that was not something I meant to click there. Uh, let's go queen here. Oh, wow, he just pre-moved. Yeah, that, now it's easy. B8, 
Yeah, it's guys like I don't know why he's rated nine hundred. He should be higher rated than this, I think. Um, it's like he's playing fast moves and not that badly somehow. But anyway, now it's kind of easy, of course. Just trade and win, pretty much. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna push the pawns down. Not a lot he can do about this. Yeah, we're just gonna take our time here. Absolutely nothing that he can do. Just gonna push the pawns. Uh, no perpetual check there. That's fine. And we're gonna go here. We're just gonna queen our pawn pretty much is the plan. Push this way. There we go. Can I win by pre-moving all the remaining moves? Maybe. Yep, there we go. All right, let's find a different opponent, though, because, yeah, if I play him again, you're kind of going to know how the game will play out, whereas different opponent, yeah, a bit more more interesting, maybe. Uh, Bishop d3, let's go knight c6, play a little creatively. Works off because he blunders the pawn. Uh, yeah, I like to do these sort of tricks sometimes in the games, just to have a little fun and stuff. Uh, we've got bishop g4 there. We just get a very nice fluid development here. Um, we have to be careful because we've got this annoying thing coming up. Let's go rook g8 to deal with it then. Uh, he's still not threatening to take us out. Or wait, he is threatening to take. Because, yeah, he had to move h3, but he missed the opportunity. So, we can always play h6 to break the pin as well at this point. He does have knight d5, which is actually kind of annoying. Uh, yeah, we can do this, bishop e6. And take advantage of the fact that when he takes, like, we've got this, this discovery. It's kind of annoying that we actually aren't winning material in that case, because it feels like it should be winning material. Okay, he ends up blundering anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Just go here and just bring stuff into the attack, more or less. Just g4, fix the weakness on h2. Make sure I don't get back rank mated. And, yeah, I mean, from here, this it's just where piece up for nothing. It's, it's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, rook a3, fix that weakness. Rook h8 can come as well. And yeah, we're just going to increase the pressure steadily from here. Bishop c4 is smacking a little bit of desperation. And yeah, we can just cash in with a combination. Uh, there's no rook g2 because of the pin, of course. So yeah, that's kind of the end of the game for him. Uh, we're going to take this way first to make life easy. And probably missing some faster mate, but this, of course, will be good enough. And he flags anyway. Guys raid 2000, so I think it's, it's worth it to give a rematch and see how it plays out with whites but maybe he's not so keen so let's find a, another one to play I'm getting some decent opposition here with the the one minute games so i'll go d3 could play with e4 next move that could be kind of interesting sure how that plays okay this guy's clearly not that high rated when he's playing queen to f6 but you can still see how the bishops is not that effective in these uh in these positions as such uh let's go bishop g5 we'll play the best move go bishop here and threaten this guy now don't know if you'll see that though okay he does uh yeah we can actually play this we've got rook g1 if he takes the pawn which is kind of nice for us castle got bishop g3 at bishop a3 so it doesn't really lead anywhere for him and i just wasting a lot of time the bishop's covering here which i don't think he realized so he just loses a pawn a piece i should say uh, we can even take with the king so that he doesn't have bishop h3 pins at the end. That's kind of the, the idea we're going for there. Uh, just get out of the pin, go knight h4, and just have a very, very comfortable position, in fact. With extra piece and very easy development. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a nice thing. Like, yeah, you can really, the two main ways of, of playing this kind of system is, like, going for the, you know, the Philidor stuff with d3 e4 d3 knight d2 this kind of thing uh knight f3 and then there's the one yeah where you go like g3 bishop g2 those are really the main options you have within d3 and d6 um occasionally there'll be some creative way you can play it but for the most part those are going to be the main ideas let's say uh yeah guys one eight nine which is kind of funny let's find a try find a higher rate opponent than that this guy's 1400 i think i i saw his name before uh um, yeah this is kind of a fun setup you can do against sicilian style just going like Bishop e7, knight f6. If they go knight free, just kick their knight away. Uh, and we kind of saw something a bit like this in the previous game, actually, where often you'll go c5 and just use that as a way to stake a foothold in the center, basically. Uh, it's kind of a weird sort of position, not very theoretical, I guess. 
but we do want to try and find a good spot for the queen at some stage. Let's go knight e5 and yeah, welcome the exchange of pawns. Like d6 can come, but it just doesn't really do that much here. Now let's go e4, bishop d6, and yeah, this puts us in a very nice position to attack their king when we uh when we have these ideas of knight g4. Like even even bishop h2 might actually be winning, and you know, it looks tempting, so we're gonna go with it. Like we got queen h5, and we just already have. All kinds of mate threats are not the easiest for white to deal with. Actually, here I can even just win the queen. That's that's going to be good enough here for sure. So, yeah, it's kind of over for white. Uh, he resigns. Let's see if he wants to play again. Go d3, go knight f3. Yeah, let's go g3 this time. I was thinking of trying to play some funny bishop g5 stuff, but... Yeah, here I'm actually I'm going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to go for this setup once again, even though we played knight f3 already. Like, you can still kind of adapted a little bit if you like go h3 just yeah win the bishop it's gonna say win the bishop pair but actually yeah he decided we you know they could have traded it but yeah this is a bit of a blunder now we we do just win a pawn and again very very solid position with the the pawns like this and they're just giving us a second one just gets even better for us uh so knight d4 you can go bishop e3 uh yeah i don't i could take that pawn actually but i'm gonna be solid and let them trade if they want because we are still up two pawns in that case even with one of the pawns being doubled here uh we can oh he's trying to trap the bishop yeah we got f4 luckily we are able to to free the prelate here and yeah that bishop's now free meaning we can go like c3 rook e1 and just basically consolidate here you know uh c3 we're happy to release the tension in this way bring our rook into the game this king of course is still very exposed here uh, go like queen h6, the rook can come in, and there's not really a lot that he can do about this. Uh, this is just going to be forced mate now. So, yeah, that was fairly straightforward. Now uh, let's try and find a a different opponent to play against, just for a little variety. Um, I think we've got... Yeah, it's about right. Okay. So, uh, let's go e4 this time. Just want to play a little bit differently, kind of show how this typical endgame plays out. This one's not as good a version, of course, when I haven't played the weakening c5, but it kind of, your piece will off me going to similar squares and I have a structure, right? And, you know, his position's a little bit passive already, without really doing anything terribly wrong. Um, like, definitely for those of you who love endgames, it's kind of a, you know, a logical choice to do something along these lines. Uh, and that's six is kind of passive, we're just able to just keep improving the position, like b5, um, we don't want to rush with bishop c4 because he does have rook d2 as a tactic, but yeah, you can see he took away the one retreat square for the knight, and it's it's just all over now. So we're just up a piece, and we're just going to attack down the a-file as kind of the game plan. Uh, happy to, to trade stuff off while we're just winning material here, in fact. Knight c4, just do things with tempo. Uh, we've got rook a4, line, line up our rook a1, and, and this kind of thing, which you can't really get out of, actually. Just trade off his good pieces and the rest kind of falls into place. Uh, go bishop f5 even. Just keep on, keep him on the defensive. And now we just trap in his knight and the rest kind of plays itself from here in fact. Just defend everything. Let's keep defending everything. e6, we even have made if he falls into it, but this will do as well. Uh, we're going to take this pawn, just take the harvest really. Get a free knight. And yeah, there's nothing he can do here. I'm just gonna queen the pawn and that's it. Um, let's play him again. That's 1700. Reasonable rating, I think, to, to spar with. Um, let's go bishop g4. I kind of want to show you how this kind of setup plays with uh, with like bishop e7 castles playing for a, a French kind of style sort of structure. But a French where you kind of have the, the bishop outside the pawn chain. Uh, which means that now this, this pawn comes under some attack, and actually this move's a little bit of a mistake, because now we are going to just win this pawn with this tactic, which is something you should have avoided, of course. Uh, F4, we could even go knight c4 potentially, but this is fine too. We're kind of happy to just swap off and, you know, convert the extra pawn. We stop any counterplay with knight c5, so we can play f5 a little more easily. To give him knight g5, but fortunately he did not see this. And now we are kind of just doing things tactically to make his life difficult. Pick up another pawn, pick up the exchange, and yeah, kind of falls into place from here. 
We're just so happy to trade off the rook. We're happy to bring out king in, bring the pawns up. And yeah, not really a lot they can do in this case. In fact, go g6, just keep pushing more or less. You can take your time here because there's nothing they can really do at this point to disrupt the flow of the game. You can even just stop all their counterplay and, you know, just maneuver until their weaknesses drop off. It's kind of the idea here. Um, yeah, let's go f4 first. Just run him out and move steadily is, is kind of what we're going for. I see five. Get this guy. Yeah, we're going to go for it this way. And yeah, his knight's just completely dominated by our pawns, of course. Not a lot he can really do about that. Now his knight's kind of just trapped. Yeah, rook b4. And we're going to win it one way or the other, you know, and pawn in game is, yeah, very, very easy win here. You can defend this guy for added measure. Uh, just don't play queen g7, because that would be stalemate. That's one thing I have to be careful of. I actually underestimate how much time I spent with this game. Maybe I was toy of him too much, but... Okay, we'll play him in two more, just to see if he's up for it. I'll go d3. Um, yeah, we'll go g3 this time. little variety. Um, yeah, we're going to play knight f3. Just play it like a normal pirates. This is not a good move, by the way. Because now his pawn comes under fire. A theme we also saw in the previous game, by the way. Interesting to see how he fell for the... The same kind of thing, even with colors reversed. And yeah, the trades are not really helping his case either. Now we have the bishop pair as well as the extra pawn. And yeah, we can even double his pawns if we want to, but it's it's not really necessary either. You can also just keep up the pressure with the pieces. Um, and yeah, I mean, at this point, I think we can just collect the harvest. Uh, that's an interesting move by him. But we do have rook d7. Just keep up the pressure, kick him around like this. C5, we can also go bishop f4. Um, by the way, the reason I didn't play bishop a7 is rook a8 is, is going to win back the pawn. That's why I did it this way instead. Uh, now we're going to pick up this pawn with a small little deflection tactic. And nice added bonus, we also pick up this pawn as well, in fact. So it's really completely lost for black at this point. C6, just push our passer. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't even really care if they take, because we're up two pawns. In the same colored bishop ending, which equals easy win for white. Now it's three pawns even. I could even push there, but it doesn't really matter by now. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, that was closer. Uh, yeah, he has no pawns left on the board. Works for me. Just completely run him out of moves. I can even toy with him a little bit at this point. Huh. Kind of run away this way. We're just going to... Torture him a little bit. Get him in the torture chamber. There we go. Okay, one more. Last one. And then we find a new opponent or, or something. We'll find out. Okay, blunders the pawn again. It's amazing how many people just blunder the pawn there. It's kind of funny. But anyway, uh, this does just win me a pawn, right? Like a second pawn. It's a bit nervous. My queen was getting trapped. But I do have a way out there, actually. I could go a4 first. That would actually be very annoying. But... Luckily for me, he doesn't see that, and my queen is kind of able to get away, and I can keep the position closed and sort of have enough time to stabilize with knight b6. I'm going to go e6, just make sure that he can't really get at my at my position all that easily. Because he does have kind of decent development, but it's not worth two pawns of, of compensation here. Just attack this guy. I'm going to bring my bishop to e8 as a way to kind of consolidate the king's side. Uh, I can bring the knight to d5. I can also... Just pile the pressure on d4. You can see he's trying to attack the king, but it's not really leading anywhere here. And you know, this pawn sack doesn't really do anything, frankly. I don't know what he's going for. Like, I mean, we're just happy to kind of swap off here at this stage. F6, yeah, I don't know why he swapped, but... Queen b3, maybe? Okay, he does have this fork, but... We do have queen d1 and then queen b6. That has to defend with a check. And then buy the time to defend the other pawn as well. And again, you can see how, like, it's very hard to pierce the sort of structures that you get when you play d6 with the uh, with the black pieces. We even threatened mate as well, which is nice. But he doesn't see... Um, yeah, let's find a new opponent. Uh, probably going to stop videos somewhat soon, but not ready to just yet. want to get at least a couple more games first to show maybe any other ideas. This guy, I recognize the name. I think he's 2000 or something. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, let's go, let's play a little creatively. Let's play it like a London system, but a London where we have the, 
the pawn on d3 instead d4, which is kind of funny. <clears throat> and yeah, it is a nice way to play against the uh, the Kippo setups, actually. Where we're able to kind of use the fawn pawn and open up the h-file for the attack. Definitely a way to, to have a bit of fun here. I was going to get e4 and kick his pieces around like that. Um, I mean, after knight f4, it feels like there's got to be some good tactic there, actually. But I don't see it just yet. Um, I mean, we can also just develop normally. and It's not really obvious what he's doing. But yeah, let's take. Let's go knight d4 and try to attack. Maybe a little bit too forcing, but this feels like his king is so open that something's got to be good here. And actually, this was a mistake. I should just go queen g4 directly. I got a little bit too smart here. But it's still very hard for him to deal with this attack. I mean, I can even take the pawn and go knight f5, if e5. And yeah, I mean, you can see how we have so many frets in this uh, in this position here. Uh, and he can't really do a whole lot at this point. Um, he may as well just keep the tension, I guess. Could also take with the pawn, but I think it's safer to take with the knight. And yeah, I mean, we can just keep the tension. There's not a whole lot he can do here. I'm running a little bit short of time. I do need to, to hurry up a little bit here. And talking too much, not moving enough. Uh, he just blundered a tactic, right? Bishop g4. And we win the queen. He sees that, but yeah, this is kind of bad for him now. He can take the pawn. No immediate refutation of that. Um, yeah, let's go king here. Yeah, now he might be thinking of taking the pawn. So we be slightly careful here. But as long as we play fast, it should be fine. Let's go for this or something. Let's just go for the attack. We're threatening some tactics here. And it's not so easy for him to deal with. Like, Rook F1's probably forced, but... Yeah, we can just keep the tension. It's not a lot he can do. Um, do I want to play him again? Let's find a different opponent, actually. Because, yeah, he's sort of played this, like, Hippo, which is... Kind of, yeah, not really D3, D6 territory that much. I mean, to be fair, you can actually play this kind of like a Hippo. Like, I'll show you a funny system, actually, that is a little bit of a meme, known as the cow opening where you basically can just put your knights like this and this, and it's sort of like a kind of modified hippo in a way. It's objectively not very good, but it's a way to kind of avoid fury and just get some position to play. Um, problem with the the cow, though, is that you sort of really struggle to find a good pawn break in the middle game, because your knights are often blocking the kind of flank play that you might want to go for later as such. So that part's not really ideal, but okay, at least it's a fun system to you know mess around with after a few beers or whatever. Looks like this guy's going to resign, though. Or not resign, but, like, you know, aborts. Uh, we'll run out of time. You get the idea. So, I mean, for me, I'm going to go bishop here, castles, maybe go d5, c5. That's usually the way these positions kind of play out. Um, let's see if I can find uh, another opponent, like, show you that you can play the cow with white as well. I'll use different move order, but you're going to get the same idea, like, 92, and have some fun uh, with this. Knight g3, knight b3. And yeah, you just sort of play like very, you know, try to play very solid, I guess. And it's true, you'd much rather than I on c4. That's a little bit of a problem with playing it this way. But yeah, that's sort of what happens when you play a meme opening. Like you want to play f4 here, but the problem is that when you play f4, you can't take back with the pawn, which is what you'd like to do. But when they're just giving you like these really great moves, like giving you the central majority... And giving you a pawn, it, it of course it makes it look a lot better. Uh, so queen here, we're just gonna use our bishops, use the extra pawn, and just basically destroy black in the the center is the plan. Uh, so f4 is really gonna be what we're going for. He's trying to distract us, but not really. Or to that much help somehow. We're gonna just use the pin, and yeah, I mean there's just not a lot black can do to to avoid the double pawns, and and then it gets really a lot easier when their king is also very exposed, in addition to all the problems they already have with, like, being down a pawn and, you know, this knight not really doing much on a5, let's say. Um, yeah, let's keep the bishops. We'll keep the bishops around. So let's sacrifice the exchange, but the problem is that this knight is hanging, we cover the back rank, and queen f2, while well, we even have rook a8 made, actually, uh, which is even better than just queen d1. So, yeah, that's that. That's the end of that game. I'll give him... We'll play him again, but I want to try and show a, a slightly different system. Okay, he just blunders the pawn. Not much you can do there. The fact that he blunders the pawn is probably the sign it's time to conclude the video after this game, because, yeah, you've already seen the pawn blunder, like, three times, so when I say that some people will fall for it, at least I guess you'll, you'll believe me now that it's, like, 
based on actual evidence, not like just something I'm saying, like just to, to sell D6 as a move or whatever. Uh, probably should have just take, just moved the knight. This was a little unnecessary to give him the center like that, but in fairness, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Like still up a very solid extra pawn and white still doesn't really have a good plan somehow. Just going to castle king to safety, play on the queen's side, push a b pawn, attack c2, all kind of plays itself. I'm uh, just going to go for this. We don't even mind if they take on g6. You know, the pawn structure is still very solid for black. Maybe rook c3 was better, but it, it just doesn't matter all that much by now. Um, we can go for bishop d6. Because he really wishes he could play, like, rook here, here, and attack, but it's just not really happening. Um, bishop here doesn't really threaten anything. We can just keep up the pressure on c2. Also, the d4 pawn is a weakness as well, by the way. So, really nothing white can do to break our structure so easily. Um, and yeah, you might have also noticed, like, with these positions, that, uh, yeah, sometimes d6 can transpose into a different type of opening. Well, not completely different, but, like, sometimes you'll see it lead to a king's Indian type structure, and sometimes you'll lead it to, it lead to something altogether different. But, yeah, this sort of theme of white, you know, not really having an easy target kind of, yeah, comes up a lot as... As we've seen already, as mentioned a few times before. Um, yeah, I think that's a good moment to conclude this video. I think it's it's given you a good feel of how these uh, how these positions play out with uh, with d6 as such. And yeah, I wish you luck with with playing this in your own games. Um, yeah, feel free to share any questions or perspectives you have on d6 in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the, the next video. Take care.